Welcome home, Mr. and Mrs. What is this? I'll tell you, this is just a package I've been holding. It's addressed to Mrs. Goldstein. Richard's the only one who sings. I can, I, yeah, so I can tell you about that. Is I did work on it in New York with Eli, who wrote the music. Uh, John wrote all the lyrics. Uh, and so we had, we worked it out and had to specifically say, in my character, I lose my breath at certain points, yet you have to serve the really smart lyrics. So I really had to choose where I lose my breath and where I have to be a pretty good singer and devote myself to what John wrote. Uh, and so, and then, then that should have been taken place, taken care of because we shot this thing, what, in two days? Yeah. Two days. Literally. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I think the movie industry should learn from that, that things can be done quickly and still be done well. Reese and Alex pride themselves on, on researching the tech of whatever documentary they're emulating, and will rent that kit and find those lenses and that camera, and it, it's really impressive. I think it, it's such a great show, and it's well written and performed, but Reese and Alex, their attention to the tech detail in particular, I think, elevates the show. They really do, especially costume, uh, uh, wardrobe, um, the makeup. I mean, putting those those sideburns on. It was all lead-based makeup <laughs> to be authentic. Yeah, there's some very good wig work in this episode. What co-op the musical looked like as a production? No, I don't think we did. I mean, it's your show, pretty much, yeah. right? This it's is your gleaned show. from the songs. You know, there's a, as you know, it's about an elevator man in a building. Uh, you, about a door man. You want to know something? I, in, in, in my head, I, I think of the show Company with these songs, and that's what I thought of. Uh, so, you, you know, I, I, I looked at what the 24-page script was, and that's the story we tell. I didn't do a, I didn't act in a parody. I acted in the 24-page script that John and Seth wrote, and that's that's what we were doing. Yeah, but a, a, a bunch of uh, a bourgeois uh, a Manhattanites circa 1970. Which and is company. Yeah, 100%. That's company, except they were talking about marriage. We're talking about... Living in this you know, building. I didn't even think about this. We're talking about a building. <laughs> and just the first two letters of the titles are similar, and therefore a joke is made. But I don't, I swear, I don't act out the joke. I acted out company. I'm getting much too esoteric. And no, that's not I, esoteric. I, that's classic comedy acting. You pl you play it as a real person. I which really you did. did. Well, I it's did. also what I think spoke to Bill and Fred and Seth when they pitched this show because we had shot uh, the Ian Rubbish sketch on SNL, and Fred delighted as everyone in the sketch did in the subtlety of it, which is. Um, rare on SNL just because it tends to be a bit more broad and a bit louder. Um, but they really enjoyed trying to emulate and, and play in earnest the the sort of format that they were replicating. And so I know that that was a big impetus for making Documentary Now is was to do something, play it straight, play it real. Can you tell me the name the, of the sketch again? Ian Rubbish. Ian Rubbish. It was uh, it was Fred's version of Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious and oh, okay, their okay. their relationship to Margaret Thatcher and when Margaret uh, Thatcher passed away, Fred wrote a sketch that he was uh, a punk band in London around the same time and his name was Ian Rubbish but he was very pro Maggie Thatcher. I certainly remember it. Yeah. yeah okay. Richard Song. Yeah. You like mine? Yeah. Because it's like because it's based off of I'm not going to get married today, right? I mean that that's uh, three of the songs in my opinion, <laughs> mine and the, and the the cocaine song. I'm going to put my are, yeah, um, but um, the I gotta go uh, wow. holds a uh, because that directly makes fun of the artist who did the song, the situation that is captured in the documentary, which you know. It, which happened, and who's going to say? But it led some, led some drama to the original documentary, and the song itself is one of those brow beat, uh, 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 chest beating torch songs, which makes me laugh hilariously. So I I, I happen to love that one. Yeah, and Paul is great. A little cocaine tonight, though, is really great. A little cocaine tonight. My song is hilarious, and a, they had to cut it for time. But there is a section that was cut that made me laugh so hard when I was doing it, but it got cut. So what are you going to do? do you think if so you I'd had, like to do it right now. If you hadn't broken, do you think they would have kept it? If you could have been a professional and hadn't 
Yeah, they're not clean tanks. I ruined it. I did it right easily 18 times. But it's very funny. It's like all I ever wanted was to play uh, was to, to play, play, play for the Yankees. Play, play for the Yankees, yes. or or be wealthy in general. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes, uh, but my father he got sick, and uh, I should call him. It's been years, but he's not good on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not good on the phone. Killed me. Yeah, yeah. That killed me. Oh God. Anyway, there you go. And what's really great is is that, you know, you you read it, and. You think it's funny, the visual, so and I, which I didn't get because I didn't go into the room when she was doing it, or I didn't understand the story really, and then you see it. We saw it at Sundance. Oh my God, it just killed me the way it just popped in there, and she's magnificent. Mm-hmm. There is a woman who, as a performer, is as magnificent as she is as a One person. One of the funniest people of all. She's time. funny. She's a great heart. She's the greatest, and you but please put that on camera. It should, everybody should know it. I think that uh, I, I think authenticity is maybe the the most important factor. If it's up to a, a singular thing, is is authentically uh, capturing and then dissecting the subject matter that that you're trying to recreate or that you're reflecting. Um, but I think I think the second that you go too silly or too broad or too obvious. It sort of sucks the joy and um, kind of uh, uh, yeah authenticity out, out of it. I think that that's important in, in specific to the mockumentary structure. Do you have an answer? Yeah, where it's uh, where the characters have some sort of depth. I think usually in the great sort of mockumentaries, something's going wrong. The characters are suffering. There's failure. That's certainly happening in this. Like in the original Pennebaker documentary, they're just recording the cast album. They're having issues recording it. But in this, there's the added idea that the show has just closed, <laughs> which is not in the original. And so it just kind of, somehow when you have characters facing failure, like Spinal Tap or the, the amateurs and waiting for Guffman, uh, waiting for this producer to show up who's not going to show up, the fact that the characters know they're on camera gives an extra... <laughs> Intensity to that kind of kind of throws them into relief more, uh, but I think it's only it only works if you give the characters credit as people, as uh, Young Richard was saying, play it as a real guy. I, I sort of, I, I, it's true you, you do play it. I also believe that pointing out the joke or underlining it is, uh, or capitalizing it, you know, putting it in capital letters. Here's the joke will ruin a mockumentary. It almost has to be like. Uh, almost subversive that like, oh, did you catch that? That kind of thing. So it doesn't hit your face. You got to go to it. Yeah, it's observational humor, but the viewers are the ones who have to do the observation. It's sort of, it, yeah. it's the truth. And and the minute you underline it, or like you say, you play it too broad, it it's just a disaster. And God, Spinal Tap is... Uh, the was is the best. It's like and the gold it, standard. Yeah, it is. Modern, and uh, it's, <laughs> what's astounding is it was the first. Mm-hmm. When you think of it, it was really the first. I think there's a thing where you can't... Although Take the, the Money and Run is a good one. That's true. I forgot to Take the Money and Run is done as a Yeah, he I haven't done seen it. Take the Money and Run. Oh, uh, the first film Woody <laughs> Allen directed. <laughs> I don't know what happened true. to him. He was so promising. He was good. He was good. Yeah. He was always so funny. I bet he'd be Had terrible. Had he but lived, he, he could him. have accomplished so much. <laughs> <laughs> Tragically killed after that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll never know. We'll never know. Sad. <laughs> Such promise. King of Kong, fistful of quarters. Oh my gosh! Yeah. 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 Well, what Billy Mitchell is like the best villain of all time ever. Um, but like when Nicole, Steve's wife, is talking about being decent, he's just decent. Breaks my heart every time. Interesting. I love that documentary. It's one of my all-time favorite films. Well, I would want to be in a in a fire fest uh, uh, that's documentary. Oh, right. that's, that's going to have to be. Idea. Although I'm I'm too now. old to play an annoying millennial, so Why? I could I could be the guy in the Netflix one, the old the old guy, the gentleman, Billy. Who, yeah, yeah, who, yeah, yeah. To get the water, the blowjob, guy. The blowjob yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Part. Now, is is it my imagination, or because of there's so many outlets, more documentaries are being made, or is it just more documentaries are being seen? That's an interesting question. I think it's probably because there's just more, more uh, platforms and networks. I think and seen. These I think days. the latter. I think it's being seen. They, yeah. yeah. Because all of a sudden you've mentioned two that must be done immediately because they're mm-hmm. so they've been 
with us. Well, the uh, King of Kong is a couple of years old, mm -hmm. but you know they did the wild, wild uh, country thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right away. Yeah. Which, which I can't wait to see. Oh, documentaries are in in itself cheap. Mm -hmm. You don't pay actors. Um, lighting does not take a lot of time. In fact, doesn't take much time at all. And you, you catch it, you're just lucky. Oh, you know, it was a great one. Three Identical Strangers. That is great. Do you remember the one about the guy who goes to, to do the, the clown at the children's party, and he turns out to have been... Yes, a, remembering the... Uh, the Freedmans. The Freedmans. Yes, and I know, oh, I know the director. The Freedmans. Capturing yeah, the Freedmans. The Freedmans. Yeah, things awesome. like that when... I mean, that in itself is what a story. That's hard to do, though. But that, that, that's Three Identical well, Strangers. that's the thing where you're making yeah. one film, and then it sort of turns into something Three else. Identical Strangers, did yeah. that happen? Yeah. I mean, if you think of, of most of the documentaries, I, I think the source material, the original documentary itself, can be kind of watched ironically or, or be enjoyed and, and laughed at in itself, either for eccentricity or, or irony. So you're right, like the really, like, abducted in plain sight would ha would be really tough to do to spoof